will start a little bit a little bit later. Um, we'll start with a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Spirit Circus, uh, president of IAC, uh, director of youth services and recreation for the city of Glen Cove. If everyone can just mute when they're not talking, you just avoid some of the static. Uh, but Jamee, you want to start? Hi, everyone. Jamee Crowder. Um, I um, just wanted to say, do, do you want me to do the treasure report now or after? No, no, that would be later. Just introduction. Um, I'm with uh, the chamber. Carolyn? Hi, Carolyn Wilson, Vice President of IAC, and I'm with the North Shore Historical Society uh, Museum. Phyllis? Yep, that's Phyllis. There we go. I got it. Hi, I'm Phyllis Burnett, um, new board member, and uh, with Kiwanis of Glen Cove. You were thrown off the board because you missed your meeting last week. Well, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Travis? I want to be. I want to be thrown off the board. Uh, I, I, I missed so many meetings. I should be thrown off the board. Uh, uh, Pastor Travis <laughs> from Trinity Lutheran Church and on the IAC board. Thanks, Travis. Cindy. Cindy Rogers with Congressman Tom Swazi. Marianne. Hi, Marianne Small, Glen Cove Conference of Saint Vincent de Paul. Sue. Senior Director of Patient Customer Experience, Glen Cove Hospital. Uh, Mr. Romero. Romero, I am a crisis counselor from New York Project Hope. Thank you. Irma. Good morning. Happy New Year, everyone. Irma Gentry from Glen Cove DOC. Thank you. Tony. <laughs> Tony's muted. There you go. Tony Jimenez, Veterans Affairs. Thanks. Hello? Yep, we got you. Colleen? Muted. Good morning. Colleen Spinello, uh, uh, Church of St. Rocco, and on the IAC board. Ann? Good morning, Ann Fangman, Glen Cove Community Development Agency. Uh, iPhone 631-300-874. Uh, it's Shelly, Director of Marketing for Glen Gav Rehab. Thank you. Ron? Morning, everyone. Ron Rowell from AARP Long Island. Sharon? Hi, good morning. Uh, Sharon Harris, Executive Director of SAFE and past president and current board member of IAC. Ms. Delgado? Luann Delgado, Crisis Counselor for New York Project Hope. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Francesca? Hi, I'm Francesca Carbone. I'm a social worker for SAFE Inc. Uh, Melillo? Yes, hi, it's Rose Melillo from the mayor's office of Glen Cove and I'm uh, the public relations officer. Thank you. Camille? Hi. <laughs> it's Camille, Glen Cove CDA. Thank you. Franca? Hi, good morning. It's Franca Trunzo, Glencoe Boys and Girls Club. Good morning, everybody. Pam is still trying to get on. Mayor Pam is still trying to get on. Uh, she's still having technical difficulties. She just wanted to say good morning to everyone. Happy New Year. Um, she might be popping into my office in a little bit. Uh, so we will start with our speakers uh, from Project Hope. Ms. Romero, I believe you have a presentation that we sent to Jim May, correct? All right. Yes, I will be speaking. Yes, we have a presentation that was sent. Okay. Thank you, you very much. Not a problem. Whenever you're ready. 
Uh, yes, uh, well, uh, this presentation is courtesy of our agency provider, Charles Evans Center, which I know uh, you're very familiar with from the from GAMCO. And uh, they are a, a health provider and they are the, our agency provider. Let's continue. Uh, Charles Evans provides uh, health services with excellence and care, and they are um, they provide these services to historically underserved communities that are uh, have low income, and also those with uh, autism. That this is you know something very special that they provide learning and developmental disabilities and behavior health issues. Continue. These are some of the services. They're all primary uh, health care services that they provide. I'm just uh, giving you a list so you know um, that they are available to your constituents and your members. Continue. And this is the, they have three locations. They have a location in Bethpage, the one in Glen Cove, and uh, one in Hopog, and they work from nine to five. And here are their telephone numbers uh, for each of the locations. Let's continue. And what is Project Hope? Well, Project Hope is um, a crisis counseling program. And uh, a New York Project Hope is statewide. A, and it's, uh, it's a program from the Office of Mental Health of New York State. And it's a uh, managed through an interagency federal partnership between the Federal Emergency Management Administration and um, a FEMA and the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. As I said previously, Charles Evans um, Center is our agency provider. Let's continue. Well, you know that during these times of COVID, we are feeling, you know, a little bit stressed, anxious, um, and you know, all these things. Uh, um, let me decline a call. I didn't know that was gonna happen. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> and you know, confused, angry, sad, and uh, let's continue. What we do is that uh, we provide individual, uh, a crisis counselor, counseling, excuse me. And um, what we do is we try to help people understand their reactions, review their options and connect with other individuals and agencies that may assist them in improving their situation. Uh, we are active listeners. Uh, we offer reassurance, practical assistance, psychoeducation and emotional support, and also teach behavioral techniques for coping with stress. Another service that we provide um, let's continue. I know I'm, uh -huh. another service that we provide be besides the individual uh, crisis counseling is uh, educational and supportive contact. Um, educational information, we provide educational information and emotional support to, uh, to individuals and groups. Um, we are helpful educators and we are also active listeners. That's what we do the most, active listening. We offer general support and provide general information typically on the resources and, safe and services available to them. Uh, we offer them skills to help uh, individuals and group members cope with their situations and reactions. And we also do the referral services as I said previously. Our objective also is to create self-help groups that eventually may become autonomous. Uh, we do also the public education and uh, a, commonly we provide this service through public speaking at community forums, professional and service meetings and local government meetings. We also do assessments. We're trained to do assessments, uh, referrals and resource linkage. Uh, whenever we are, um, a, dealing with individuals or family that need uh, additional relief services or mental health or substance use treatment, uh, we refer them uh, 
to whatever, you know, the appropriate level of care, let's say. And uh, we also have other resources to meet a wide range of physical, structural, and economic needs. Uh, we also provide community net, we also do community networking and support crisis. We build relationships with the community, resource organizations, based uh, faith-based groups and local agencies uh, so that we can you know, do the referrals and, and create the groups and connect with the people that need our services. Some of the secondary services we do is uh, the development and distribution of the, uh, educational materials, media and public service announcements, uh, I wanted to say something about the difference between traditional case management and what we are, which is a crisis counseling resource linkage uh, program. Uh, we provide services regardless of the level of functioning. Uh, we empower people to advocate for their own, you know, for their own in order to, to get the services and resources they may need. Uh, we, uh huh. We assist them uh, in the application or, and, and in the process of referral. And uh, we empower them to be responsible for accessing their own services and our uh, relationships are short-term. Uh, we are home-based, we don't have offices. Uh, we assess the strengths and coping skills of people. We, when we do assessments, we are trained to do those assessments. We try to restore and improve their functioning and uh, we validate their, their reactions and experiences. We don't question them. We don't influence you know, them on any decisions and we don't keep records. We do not collect any identifying information. I just wanted to say to the group that I would, just a second. Okay, Google, stop. Mm. I would just say to the group that we are very interested in uh, providing, uh, creating groups within the community. We provide currently uh, services to schools, uh, uh, to many types of group. We're doing so, a lot of, we worked hard in Glencoe. We're working with the YMCA. We're working with the Boys and Girls Club. We're working with EOC. Uh, in fact, we have a, um, a memorandum of understanding in, in the works uh, to provide services uh, to uh, EOC, which has five locations throughout Nosa County. Uh, and I could keep on and on, but I know you're very busy. I just want you to know that we are available to provide these services to your staff. Uh, we have workshops on resilience, self-care, and other uh, coping skills, um, and, uh, and also, you know, to groups and individuals that you may want to refer to us uh, in the presentation, if we can continue, is our number, yeah, our, our, our helpline. We have a helpline that is uh, properly handled by, by, by uh, locally in Glen Cove, and that's the number, and that's the email where uh, people can communicate. Our helpline works from a, a nine o'clock in the morning to 8 p.m. And then you can see there that we have also a state helpline and the state uh, helpline works from um, 8 p.m. I think to 10 p.m. every day. So that would be it. Please contact us. My name is Luan Delgado, crisis counselor. My coworker here is Carolina Romero, and uh, we can provide you materials that we will send through uh, through the uh, Mr. Circus and uh, and Carolyn, uh, so that you will be able to reach us. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Uh, I thought I saw a hand somewhere. Oh, Phyllis. I know, how annoying am I? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. But my question is, is, is basically to the agencies, it's not just to the speaker that just spoke. Uh, my concern is, and I read this article in the paper a couple of days ago, is uh, how are 
EOC, the hospitals, Project Hope, how are you dealing with people who are blind, who cannot do a COVID test at home, who cannot, who cannot read the phone number, who are basically, who've been blind most of their lives, are self-sufficient, and now they are in a situation where they can't do a home test. Uh, they cannot get to a place where they can be COVID tested. How are the agencies within the community of Glencoe, I'm just throwing the question out, uh, dealing with those people who are visually impaired? And then my other question is, how are you dealing with teenagers who are now uh, going back and forth? We have school, we have no school, we have school, we have no school. And they are going through whatever they're going through. So they're going through A, being a teenager, and B, now being uh, cut off socially. What are, what, is, what are the agencies doing? So um, that's my question. Uh, I can put my hand down now. <laughs> Go ahead, Irma. Uh, hi, good morning. Um, so EOC have um, hired about, I would say, seven um, people to actually conduct a workshop for our teenagers, for our, because um, we do have a, uh, a group of teenagers that um, it's they are in our youth program, so therefore we have been conducting workshop for them how to cope with the COVID nineteen since it's gone two years now. We started having workshop on a weekly, monthly basis, and we also partnering with um, Project Hope to um, conduct workshop for them. We do virtual, we do in person. And um, we do over the phone. I myself call my team like in a weekly basis, just to find out how they're doing. If they are in need of anything, that's to answer for the teenage part. For our seniors, we also have seniors group where we contact them in a weekly basis to assess what they are in need of. We drop the food for them. If there's any documentation, they are in need of. Um, Assistant with that, we also assist with whatever the situation may be or whatever that they do need. So we do have um, staff at hand to help assist with things like that. Uh, yes, I I wanted to say that. Uh, excuse me, Circus. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say that we circus. are working with the Boys and Girls Club. I know there's somebody there from the Boys and Girls Club, the director. And uh, we're going to start a complete program with them uh, where we will be dealing with coping skills. We provide services for all ages. So we will be dealing from the children to the teens with adequate, you know, appropriate uh, topics at, the le at, at each of the levels that they can handle. And we do go to the Glen Cove uh, Senior Center and we provide there also, we have a, they're all, we have a grief and loss support group there. And uh, we do the, some individual counseling. Uh, we have been trying to reach the Glen Cove uh, School District. And we had meetings with the assistant superintendent. And we also had the pleasure of meeting with the principals. We had two meetings, one in October 12th and one in October 14th uh, with the principals. You know, one of uh, the primary and the, the middle and high school principals, and they were very interested. But, you know, to date, uh, nothing has happened. We are with YMCA in Glencoe. They were dealing also with the seniors and the teens. And we're doing a lot of work around the community. But, it, you know, we need your help to get to the community. It's been rather difficult. I always say that. Uh, New York Project Hope is sort of a dilemma because on one hand it exists to provide emotional support because of you know the people affected by the pandemic. And on the other hand, it's difficult to help the people be precisely because of the pandemic. So, you know, catch 22. 
And uh, so it's been, you know, under the circumstances, it has been difficult for us to do the outreach and, and to get to the people, but we're working really hard. And uh, at present, we have over 25 institutions that we provide services to, and not counting the individuals that we reach every, on a daily basis and the outreach that we do. We do the vaccination site, and sometimes we get thousands of people there. Yeah, it can be, it can get to the thousands right now. It's getting very high. Uh, so we do a lot of outreach there and we meet individuals that need help uh, and outreach throughout the community. So it's important that if you have activities of outreach, you know, you invite us so we can, you know, distribute our materials and people get to know the existence of the program so they can use it. It's a great program, completely free, anonymous, confidential. And, um, uh, and also we have it for your staff. You know, people are, everybody's stressed out. Right now we have COVID fatigue, but I, because, you know, well, again, we're back with our masks, with our full gear, you know, but life has to continue. We cannot, you know, uh, uh, stay still, you know, we have to go back to find a new normal. And we have to do this together and we have this great program. So I really, exhort you all to uh, pass along the existence of the program to use it, as I said before, for your staff, for your, um, the people that you serve. And thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Francesca, I know you had a question then Ron. Uh, yeah, I still got it. Um, can you, I guess, put your email and I guess for, and your coworker, Ms. Romano's in, and I guess the chat, um, because we okay. have two of our bilingual outreach workers that either work at a church or they'll do their own family um, parent program twice a year. So what you do will be great to reach out to the community members through that okay. as well. If you like came and spoke or at least worked with them to plan a time to go and speak to their um, Definitely. You know, that go Definitely. There to we will be available. We, we are a team of around 40 people. And, uh, you know, we're very well organized. So, you know, we, we, we will try to reach every, we do try to reach everybody and help them. Carolina, can you put those num our names and numbers and emails uh, in the chat? And um, yes, I wanted to say something. Um, uh, that, that's about it. What did you ask? You asked something else? Oh, no, that was well. it. Just so like we knew how to best reach you both to go forward Perfect. and like we can have our colleagues reach out to you because like they see uh, so many people so that I would was be going to for them. what i was going to say is that we are bilingual as you may have noticed by my accent yes. it's totally yeah, bilingual. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's needed it's needed so yeah, because we have a big community we have we speak other there are people within our team that speak other languages so it's not just spanish mm -hmm. and uh and we provide, especially we want to reach the parents because we're providing services, you know, to the children, to the youth, but they need their parents to know what this is all about so they can support those, you know, those services that we provide, that knowledge that we're imparting to them, you know, has to be reinforced in their home. So they need help. Yeah, no, that's great. Because our, one of our bilingual outreach workers that we work with, Lauren Caballero, she has her parent program. So she also will educate them in certain ways. But if you came in, she'll have presenters come in and speak to the parents and work with them through that way too. So I'll forward her, your guys' information as well. I think yeah, we have a lot of topics that I can forward. Hall. On the wall across from my office, there's a packet of these They're from Project Hope. They had dropped them off a couple of months oh, ago. Oh yeah, okay. Thanks. Thanks. So they're there too. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Ron, I know you had a question. Yeah, actually, just a comment, Spiro. I, I was able to listen to one of Luann's uh, presentations oh, recently God. at the Y, and, um, you know, it was about self-care and managing stress and resiliency, and uh, it was sort of a gloomy day, so <clears throat> not too many people were there, but it was a very effective presentation, very pragmatic, uh, you know, uh, useful information with a, you know, a quick self-assessment, so... Uh, I just wanted to mention that um, good work. Thank you very much, Ron. We really appreciate it. 
Uh, Sharon, you have a question, just unmute if you can. So I, I, can you hear me now, Spiro? Yes, we can. Oh, hi, thank you. Um, this is actually a question for Ms. Delgado. Um, my name is Sharon Harris. I work with Francesca who just spoke with you. Um, I did just send you an email. Um, my, our organization is an alcohol and substance use prevention agency in Glen Cove. And we have worked with the at-risk community for over 30 years. Um, I'm presently in the process of writing a New York State Office of Alcoholism and Substance Use Support Grant to bring a full-time person to the safe office to help us and help Mrs. Caballero and help Brenda Lopez and help Francesca with the influx of our walk-in community. And um, I'd like to speak with you um, at your earliest convenience regarding some thoughts and some ideas I have for this grant application. It's due in about three weeks, but um, I did reach out to you via email. And I think that there's a lot of work that we can do regardless of whether we get this grant or not. Um, SAFE is the first place that the community comes to um, for the basics and the bare necessities, as well as the negative consequences of living in the environment that they are, which places them at risk for alcohol and substance use, domestic violence. Um, we do a lot of work with children that have behavioral issues, a lot of families that have assimilated and not acculturated into the community and are geographically isolated to any kind of comprehensive um, facility that could meet all of their needs. So um, there's a lot of work we can do. There's a lot of support we can get through our IA IAC colleagues. Um, <laughs> pardon me, I'm having some pulmonary problem. Uh, but if I may speak with you or you can connect with Francesca and our, us at SAFE, we greatly welcome the opportunity to work with you. It, it would be our pleasure. I wanted to tell you that we have somebody with a lot of experience in substance abuse in our group. And okay. uh, that can be very helpful to you. And yes, okay, great. we'll contact yes. you immediately. I appreciate I, it. I, this grant fell in our lap last Wednesday and it's pretty much almost done. It's due February 2nd. But after I've been on the quest to find an appropriate coordinator um, and I think I may have done it thanks to Spiro my hero who sometimes brings everybody together when we when I least expect it boom there's the answer thank you there you go um, Pam Mayor Pam is at the meeting she's having difficulties hearing uh, but she's here as well uh, Franca had her hand raised Hi, Spiro. I just wanted to um, <clears throat> thank Luann and Carolina for their partnership with the club. Um, we have some things coming up for February and we're looking forward to it. And um, we just wanted to extend our thanks. We're, thank you, we're looking forward to it too. All right. Uh, just to continue with the COVID uh, momentum, I'm sure uh, Mayor Panzenbeck would be saying this, but I don't know if she can speak. Uh, the mayor's office was able to secure COVID testing for Glen Cove uh, at the stadium. You can make your appointments on the website. Uh, they will even be doing the antigen test to see who has the antibodies, I should say. So there's three types of testing that goes on there. Um, it is up and running. It began, I wish you would answer. I don't want to mess this up, but I believe it began on Monday. Um, it was yesterday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Sure. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, so they have that going. If anybody wants to go get tested, uh, you can make an appointment through the city website. Uh, right, Danielle? City website. And if any questions, I guess they can give a call. Yeah, I can. Um, I'll put the link in the chat for you guys. Thank you. Sure. Vera, are they rapids or are they? Both. Both, okay. Yeah. I have a question, Spyro. Do yes. you think we can be included in the interagency meetings? 
Of course. They're so helpful because oh. right now, you know, knowing about the testing, we can help, you know, the people that we reach that are in need of testing, you know, here in Glen Cove. Not a Thank problem. You so much. Jamaica, Thank you. can we add them to the email list? Perfect. Yeah, just um, it's not your emails, whoever needs to be added. Who needs okay. to be added? Do you have it? You have them? Uh, I think we I sent them in. Speakers. The, one, the email that sent you over the. Um, oh, both of those. Presentation. Okay. And also, we just sent them in the chat, didn't we? Yes. So we will discuss uh, about membership and all that stuff and how <clears throat> the IAC works. We'll let you, we'll reach out. Oh, Christine is on. Christine was having difficulties getting on before. And we just lost her. Anyone have any other questions? No, okay. I just have, um, yes. I don't know if it's a question, but um so my sister-in-law works in massachusetts but she had a did a like a coat drive for her kids she brought them and so like our local family friends had donated coats like winter coats so if anybody um knows of anybody that's in need of them i have a bunch in like a bag full in my car um so anybody can just like, shoot me in the chat if they need any i don't i haven't gone through it so i don't know like boys or girls or whatever but or a place i could donate them to that'd be great i'll, I'll say yeah I, I feel bad that pam is having trouble speaking I mean, I'm sure she'd say this herself, but the Rotary Club just did like a co drive and he dropped off a lot of. I got my iPad on my hotel, but mine said join. I got a mute. I got a mute. The mayor. I'm sorry, Jamaica. I had, you know what? I, I guys, I'm late too, but I couldn't get on on my desktop, but I'm getting on on my phone. I don't know why. So maybe Pam's oh, having the same thing. Maybe it's a city issue. I don't know. And Chase, so the Rotary, so the Rotary Club. So the Rotary Club gave out a bunch of jackets to our school district already. You could call and see if they need jackets, but um, you may want to start. The mayor was part of the Rotary Club and that um, that coat drive. So you may want to reach out to her office or um, you can always go through the school. There's no matter how many things you give, there's always somebody that misses and needs it and whatever. Right. OK, great. Awesome. And um, another thing is that I have some clients who kind of need um, blankets. I guess for the cold weather or things like that. I don't know if anybody is familiar with um, people who donate those types of things and stuff like that. If so, you can also put in the chat to me, that'd be great. Just cause now that it's getting colder. Um, yeah. But thanks. Uh, Francesca, speak to uh, Ms. Caballero too. Cause I gave her a bunch of coats as well. Um, and she was able to distribute them. I know some right, of great. her clients need. Yeah. Right, thank you. Yeah, the Kiwanis Club, we've don't we've got coats we've donated them and i was going to say the blankets we can you know we're having a meeting uh, tomorrow so i can mention it at tomorrow's meeting but we right. usually get uh, when we get clothing we donate it we donate it to uh trinity lutheran church prep you know travis ye pastor so we usually donate it through him but uh travis if you need anything you know just give me a shout i can pick it up all right all right thanks so cool. much Wilson. okay I just want to give a shout out to uh, Glen Cove uh, School District. Uh, we are looking forward to working with you. Uh, we've gone through many meetings and uh, everything has been positive, but it hasn't, you know, uh, crystallized. Uh, you know, we're never going to go back to the way things were pre COVID 19. We're never going to go back optimistic comment it's a reality and and we have to create this new normal and we can you know we have to start we know more every day about you know the the virus and the disease and the treatments and how to protect ourselves and i know schools are going through a tough time but because precisely they're going through a tough time i think that we can provide much assistance to the youth there so let's see if we can get together again and discussing. Perfect, thank you. Um, I, Pam says she does not believe her computer has a speaker system. I'm not sure if she's on her phone now, but I see her and I lost her, there she is. 
He's real good. Twilight Zone. Uh, and uh, Jamee, would you like to do the treasurer's report now? Uh, excuse me. Uh, even though I asked for the membership, we have a previous commitment. So uh, we will like to be excused from the meeting at this moment. Okay. Because I wasn't planning on asking for membership. <laughs> well, are you guys combined with the regular Charles Evans Center? You are a part of it. Yes, they yes, are. So you guys agency. have a membership. As long yes, but it's a Glen Cove me membership. Let me tell you what happens is this is a grant and Charles Evans is the agency provider, but we have a coordinator, you know, like we're a separate program. Oh, okay. All you right, know, so we work with them because, you know, they are an agency provider, but we are not, you know, a, an integral part of what they do. So that's why I asked for it because our coordinator, I know, you know, he doesn't go to the meetings. So, you know, it's sort of a little bit different. We are, but we are not. But okay. we're happy to be with Charles Evans. We'll They're talk great. about it offline. That's perfect. Okay, right. so we're Thank leaving you. again. Thank you. It's been wonderful. Thank and you. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Have Thanks. a good day. Um, so for the treasurer's report, um, forgive me, this is my first time doing it, but I'm excited to be the new treasurer for the IAC. Um, I'm going to share the screen that has our IAC membership uh, on it. Um, so far we have 17 paid for this year. Um, and if you see your name on here and haven't paid yet, um, or if you've paid and it's you've sent a check, and I, I haven't gone to uh, get the checks within the last uh, couple of days from the PO box. Um, but, but if you haven't received the email that has a direct invoice for you, um, let me know, just reach out and I could re-email the invoice and um, the um, payment could go online, which we use um, Stripe at this time. And we do have a slight cost on Stripe, which is um, just for convenience alone, I think it makes sense for us to still utilize that. But um, considering we had a balance um, in December 31st of um, 5,981, and our balance today is um, $6,675. Um, so we had some organizations. But why doesn't my phone have to sound like that? <laughs> Uh, we have some organizations that like to pay two years in advance. Uh, so you'll see that you have it marked with 200, just so you know, that's what that means, that they pay for two years. Um, so if you're paid up for this year, don't worry about it. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to um, ask. I can't tell if you need it on this, though. I think we're fighting over somebody here. Um, so any questions? No, we did good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at this point, we really don't have any expenses except for just uh, our typical um, website, uh, which we're uh, looking into changing. Uh, up. I think it's Pam trying to get on. Mute everyone. I, I've tried to mute her, but she keeps like, going back on the floor. <laughs> um, but OK, so that's it, I think. All right. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, announcements? I have an announcement. I have an announcement. I have an announcement. <laughs> Mute her. <laughs> hey, I have to leave. I have to leave because I have to pick somebody up. But uh, just real quick, Kiwanis Club is having a uh, fun a, a fundraiser on February 20th, which is a Daytona 500 day, which is a Sunday uh, at Laura's Barbecue. We did this for Valentine's Day last year. Uh, you send in your order and then to me and then and then I send it to Laura's Barbecue and you can pick it up. So I just want you to give a heads up. I will send everybody, uh, since I have everybody's email address, I'll send this notice to everyone, but it just, if you would tell everybody in your area uh, or in your club that we are having, once again, we're having our uh, takeout dinner for one or two. Uh, it's on uh, February 20th, which is a Sunday. 
Uh, you can pick up your food from three to six at Laura's Barbecue, which is at 76 Shore Road in Glen Cove. So this, they got kick really good spare ribs. But uh, so I'm just letting you know, but I have to leave. So have a good week. And please don't forget Martin Luther King Day is on Monday. So, uh, you know, bow your heads and uh, I will give a shout of thanks. Thank you, guys. Bye. The, uh, now that she said Martin Luther Day, uh, the presentation will be online. Uh, I believe it will be on the city's Facebook page as well as uh, the city's website. Um, so you can get the link from there and join in the festivities. Uh, anyone else? No? Colleen. Okay, there I'm unmuted. I just wanted to let you guys know that the Church of St. Rocco Food Pantry has been helping out Nosh um, while they're looking for a new home. So on Wednesday uh, from nine to one, uh, you can send clients down there if they're in need of food, in addition to our regular schedule at St. Rocco's. Where are you on Wednesdays? We're in the church basement, the same place as our Church of St. Rocco Food Pantry is. It's downstairs. If you're looking at the church on um, 3rd Street in Glen Cove. Not in the gym. To the left. Yes, where the basketball is. Did you uh, start playing? Uh-huh, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, we're um, back in one of those little closets at that far end. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Going once, twice. If anybody wanted to um, take that presentation, I just attached it to uh, our chat here. So you could download it right now if you wanted it. Perfect. Uh, well, Jeme well, you could go. Or Hi. Um, we just also, I also wanted to let everybody know that we have a lot of fresh food and vegetables at the EOC that we are giving out today and tomorrow. We have pastries. Um, juice, milk, and eggs that we are we will be giving out today, beginning today and tomorrow. Thank you, uh, Jimmy. I don't know if you want to just include the YouTube channel that all the meetings will be saved to, or wherever we're saving them at this point. Yeah, or, or you can always go to our website too, because our website has it all listed, um, which is the IAC uh, Glen Cove. Dot, um, dot org, I think it is. <laughs> I'll pull it up. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. I see. All right. All right. If nobody has anything else, everyone have a wonderful, warmer January, uh, safe from COVID and everything else, and just keep doing. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Happy New Year. Oh, she's on. <laughs> I got, I'm, I'm sort of on. I'm half on. We'll see. My computer's pretty old. Good morning, yeah. everybody. Happy New Year. You look bright and shiny and cold. Speak to <laughs> you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, boss. Thank you so much. Have a good day, everybody. Nice presentation today. <laughs>